Now, this is a another one of the Clydesdale flies that I'm tying. This is just a light. It's an all I've done, uh, basically my quill body. Now, there's different ways of tying it. I mean, I've tied it in many sort of colours of olive. Like this is a very pale olive. The same fly I'll tie. I'll just change the colour, uh, the tail and the hackle I'm using. But this is the palest olive. This is a really nice. It's a good pattern when it's quite dull. Uh, it works well. And it, I mean, these are early season flies. I mean, at the moment I'm filling the box just through, just basically, with all the patterns. And uh, this is this is about a nice box for anyone that is basically fishing the early months of the season and probably the late end of the season as well. You'll get the olives coming off. Now, this fly is tied. It's very simple. Uh, hook size 14. Just choose a hook to suit yourself. This is a full and mill, all purpose medium. Size 14. Uh, I'd tie this 14s, 16s, and you can go down to an 18 even, uh, and it's still like, a really good pattern. This is AO and light K Hill, uni. Just a light colour to go with the colour of the hackle and the tail. Just wax it first. Now just leave a half a head type space from the eye and put your thread on. It's down about halfway or so to the or to the point of the hook. Then come back up. Just before you get near the top, near a bit, maybe leave it like a room to tie the hackle on that area. So you like maybe three turns from where you started. Now we tie in these are this cape here. You can see it, I'll just take the stir off it. But basically you've got a bit of it's black, it's a cocky bundy or cocky bendy type uh, hackle. It's got Brown, but being natural, it's got a natural black colour. It's got grey in it, and it, it's a colour that I do really well with. Both of them, I've got a few flies. So what I've done here is I've taken the, one of the feathers out, and I'm going to move fluff at the base. And if you look at the colour with this feather, these are nondescript colour uh, feathers that you, you basically you can find if you look. Basically, I find these in the bargain bucket at the at the fly shows, uh, two or three pound, and say that you've got to look through them. But uh, this is a good me, a uh, good feather. Now I'm going to tie it forward. So basically, if you're, you're that couple of turns short, so you, you tie it so working to where you actually started tying the fly uh, the, the thread on, and then come back up. So the the distance you're going to wind the hackle. There's your waist. So trim that away. And just, I'm just going to tidy it up first. Again, a wee bit of wax. And then I'm going to wind towards the thread. So we get our first turn with the hackle pliers on. And now we're winding onto the thread. Uh, you can encourage the fibres to lay towards the eye. So the underside of the feathers facing towards the eye. And you can pull it back. Now, very tenkara like some would say by doing this. There are a few other styles of flies around the world that tie very much like this. So we've got our blender colour, then we can tie it off. Just trim that away. Now what I'm going to do here is just encourage these fibres forward. See where these waist ends or the fibres are, just trim them out. Now for the, the hackle at the back, now as I say you can change the olives you're using, this is very pale, it's a very pale olive that I get by using a brown olive but it's very little dye to get this colour. Do I've already used the feather and I've got the tip left here, from the, the, the one that she's tied, so I'm going to use that up, so first thing I'm going to do is remove basically some of the fibres, tie it forward. Tie it forward of the eye, towards the, the eye anyway, and then come down. Make sure that's tied in, trim away the waist. Just tighten this up. Yeah, a wee bit of wax on my thread. I'm going to wind up to the, basically the point I'm going to wind the hackle to, or close to it anyway. And then it's quite easy, just wind down the way towards your thread. 
just what I'm doing here is just one or two fibers may want to lay back, just throw them forward. To be patient with the, the fibers to get enough colour, and then we can catch this in and continue down. Now, what I'm going to do here is trim this just slightly at an angle. Always thinking of the, the taper that you're forming for the body. You can see it's tapering towards the back. And we we'll just carry on down. Now I'm going to tie in the tail, tail fibres. And it's just one of the large hackles from the, the cock neck. Just going to bring out good, maybe half a dozen fibres. If you bring them 90 degrees from the stem of the feather, they should line up. When you're happy with that, and the length, you're looking at least the length of the hook. I'm just going to tidy up the ends here. Catch this in and then wind down to check the length, that's fine. Just to the, the back of the hook, we just lift the tail fibres up, come underneath with a turn, and then pull towards the eye, and then encourage these fibres to splay out, to fan out, and then lock them in with a turn on top. You can see how it spreads the fibres. Now I've got here, this is a peacock eye, which basically I dyed, uh, it was a yellow, and what I done then is I put it into some, some bleach, diluted bleach, just like a domestic type bleach and just looked at it and watched it because eventually the fibres start to come away. Now I usually stop it before they're completely gone because what happens is if you leave it too long the, the fibre then becomes brittle because I'd rather with my nail remove what's left. You'll see there just how it's coming away. And I've got a nice fibre there, but it's a very pale yellow, and it was because of the bleach, the bleach takes it back slightly. So, what I'm going to do is just make sure it's clean. Obviously, I tore it away from the, the feather, so you take away this curly bit, and then when you tie this in the length of the body, just to keep it balanced, work our way up all the way towards the thread, eh, sorry, the hackle. Just making sure everything's forward. Just hold it back. It's fine. Right, I'm going to wind over some varnish. It's a very light coat of varnish. This will protect it. You could, I mean, I do at times, you can coat the, the quill with some varnish or some resin, whatever you want to use. Just touch and turns wind up. Now what I like to do is turn or two what you can actually do is fold this back, or just pull it back with a turn and then ignore it and come in and finish at the back. One, two, three. Tighten up. Try and move away your thread. I usually break it off. If you just take your time, the quill will break. Yeah. Now keep the fibres forward. And this is where you can come in. and if Basically just coat the body of the quill, it'll last a wee bit longer. So what I usually do is keep the brush on the, the body and retake my vise. Gives you a nice even coat. And there we are. I'm not sure. Olive quill spider. Now you've got to remember once you start to cast this, the, the fibres will get drawn back slightly. But if you're looking for a, a great or a very good spider pattern, this is the one you want, or the style you want. So see, you just have to change the colour. You can, there's quite a few different colours you can go. So anyway, there we are. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if again, if you enjoy the videos, please subscribe. Uh, it does help. And thank you for watching.